Administration. And, uh, and I would like for Taryn Bracken to join us up on the stage. Taryn is the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Foundation for Government Accountability, which he founded in 2011. In just four years, the uh, Foundation for Government Accountability has grown to one of the top five biggest state-based think tanks in the country. Prior to this, Taryn was the CEO of the Maine Heritage Policy Center, and from 1996 to 2000, he served in the Maine House of Representatives. Please join me in welcoming Taryn. Well, while they while they're getting this plug in, and we've, you've heard part as the discussion's been going, and I found it to be very interesting because at, at, at one level, you know, my sense of uh, what I'm hearing over here to some degree is that, you know, that, that the perfect uh, is the enemy of the good, or potentially is the enemy of the good. We're going to have a chance to talk about that in a second. That hospitals are the ones who are sort of affected. The secretary has talked about how it was originally supposed to work together. So my question to you would be, what is your biggest objection to the expansion of Medicaid? Sure. Well, I think, uh, first of all, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with all of you. I think it's important to go back to 2010 and just look broadly first at what the promises of Obamacare were. Uh, one of the first key promises of Obamacare was that the average family would see a $2,500 reduction in their premium. Uh, the next big promise, the Congressional Budget Office said by last year, the number of uninsured would be reduced by 18 million. And the last big promise, as Michael referenced, was that if you like your plan, if you like your doctor, you could keep them. Well, the reality with the law is that those promises have either been completely broken or missed by a long shot. And what the law instead tried to do was to take a healthcare program that was targeted to the truly needy and expand it to a group of individuals who never received any type of welfare benefit at all. And it paid for that by enacting $716 billion worth of Medicare cuts. So just understand this for a minute. What the law did was it broke the Medicare promise to the disabled and the elderly, your grandmother, to give a Medicaid card to the 28-year-old living in grandma's basement. Okay, well, I, I need to ask a question about that because th 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 there are two parts of this. And one, one, is, one goes to the tenor of, of conversations. Do you think, do you really believe that these promises or the, 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 these aspirations were expressed knowing they couldn't be met? Or do you think that basically what happened was the issue the complications of the issue and having to sort of, you know, what they like and, you know, when Congress used to pass laws, uh, when they were talking, it was like, like watching people make sausage, no one really wants to watch it, it wasn't very nice or pretty, but do you really think this was sort of a conscious notion that these promises, that, that what they thought would happen wouldn't happen? No, I think that people were well-intentioned, but the problem in Washington is you can promise whatever, but when you pass a brand new entitlement, it doesn't matter whether you live up to the promise or not. It's the taxpayer left holding the bag. The challenge is, you know, in Washington, they print money. It just comes out of a building. But in the state capitals, they have to balance their budgets, and they have to make trade-offs. And they have to live with the results of well-intentioned but poorly designed laws. 